back to my channel. So for my full-time job, I have a couple of vacation days that I need to use before my work anniversary rolls around and I lose those days. So I am looking at planning a trip to Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is just right down the road here from Nashville. And as I was looking at Airbnbs, I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to show you the different criteria that I look for when booking an Airbnb. So I have my laptop and let's get started. Before even searching for different Airbnbs, I am going to upload an Airbnb gift card that I'm going to use, which I redeemed from my health rewards from my job, which if you haven't seen my how I afford to travel video, I'll link that in the description box below. So you can check that out after you're finished watching this video. But one of the ways that I afford to travel is Airbnb gift cards through my health rewards. So I am going to click on my account and under payments and payouts, add gift card. And then I'll just enter in the pen number from the gift card. And that gift card has been added to my account. We will talk more about how to apply those funds from the gift card to our Airbnb purchase later on but let's start looking for rentals. So back at the homepage, we will click on the location and type where we are going, Chattanooga. And I am going to be looking in May. So we're gonna go May 8th through the 10th, just for a couple of days, add guests. It's just gonna be a solo trip, so just one, and then search. So this will populate all of the Airbnbs that are available for that day for at least one guest. Now there are some filters that I like to set before I even start looking. So at the upper left hand corner, the price. And my budget is going to be about $100 per night maximum. I don't really want to spend any more per night than that. So I'll update the price. The next filter that you can filter out your search is the type of place. So most of the time I will filter out and only look at places where I will have the entire place. So that includes the bedroom, bathroom, and all the living spaces. And you will most likely not have any interactions with the host or anyone, it's just kind of your own private place. However, I know with Chattanooga, if I use this filter, it will filter out some of the bed and breakfasts that I am interested in viewing. So I am not gonna check that. Uh, if you are interested in just a cheaper option, you can do private room where you may have to share a bathroom or you may have your own bathroom, but there are common spaces and most likely this is just a room in somebody's home. And then there's other options, but I'm gonna leave that blank for this search. Now for the other filters, you can filter by different amenities. For my trip to Italy when I went for two weeks and packed carry-on only, we wanted to make sure that halfway through the trip, the Airbnb that we were staying at had a washing machine so that we could do a load of laundry and reuse some of our clothes since we were, again, packing carry-on only. If you are looking for a relaxing trip, then you can filter Airbnbs that have pools. If you're bringing your own car and you're visiting a city that has limited parking options, then you'll definitely want to use the filter for free parking to make sure that you have a parking spot for your vehicle. And then the last filter that I look at is beds and bedrooms. But something to note that if you have multiple people in your party or that are staying with you with the, in this Airbnb, is that just because you indicate a bed for each person, does not necessarily mean that those beds will be in their own bedroom. So if everyone requires their own privacy in their own bedroom, then you want to make sure that you have filtered with the number of bedrooms that you require for each person, because if not, then you may encounter the situation where the host of the Airbnb is classifying the sofa bed in the living room as an option, or they have rollaway beds that you would use in a bedroom and have multiple beds in that bedroom. So kind of be cognizant of the different beds, bedroom situations of everyone in your party or family that they will require. Since it's just me, I only need one bed, so I'm not necessarily gonna use that filter, but those are all the different filters that I look at. Now that I have those filters taken care of, I will next consider the neighborhood of the city that I want to stay in. So what I factor in are the activities that I'm planning on 
doing as well as my transportation. Am I going to be walking and using public transit or am I bringing my own vehicle? Because that'll dictate the location in which I need for my Airbnb. For my trip to Chattanooga, I will be bringing my own vehicle. So it doesn't really matter if I'm located in the heart of downtown or a little bit more removed in the countryside away from all the hustle and bustle of the downtown area. So if there is a certain neighborhood in which you want to focus your search, you can zoom into the map on the right hand side and as you move the map, it will update the available Airbnbs for that location. So you can continue to move it to find more options or focus in on that specific area. Now on the left hand side, it will list all of the different options. As you hover over each, it will highlight where that's located on the map on the right hand side. Now this first option, will go over some of the information. So it does say that this person is a super host. So the super host designation is when a certain number of guests have nominated that host to be a super host in which they have great communication, offer great amenities, and just go above and beyond the required hosting responsibilities that Airbnb has set for their hosts. You can filter your search by only hosts that are super hosts. I tend not to do that because that can filter out some of the hosts that may not have enough nominations or have received that designation but are really close and still go above and beyond. So you don't want to limit yourself by just those who have already been verified super hosts because you might miss out on some great Airbnb options. Okay, so with this listing, it will tell you the average night, the total without tax, so that's not your final total. And then the ratings and reviews. For the ratings, I tend to look at Airbnbs that are rated at least 4.9, really a 4.94 or higher and have a good number of reviews. This isn't a hard set rule that I have for myself, but that's just where I tend to lean. Now there are some Airbnbs that have been rated really low, but then did some modifications, remodeled, and their ratings have been going up. But because they had those lower ratings initially, that still has kind of hurt them in their average rating. So don't let that deter you from looking at those options. I would say really read the reviews and that can give you a good indication if that host has made enough changes to the Airbnb that has constituted a higher rating that they're not showing or displaying because it's an average and it's taking those lower ratings previously into consideration. So let's look at this first rental. When I first click on a rental, obviously look at the pictures. One thing that I look for in photos is how much carpet does the rental have? I like to have as minimal carpet as possible. In my experience in cleaning Airbnbs, owners of rentals and hosts tend to not invest in their vacuum cleaner and therefore they have a cheap, really inexpensive vacuum cleaner that has poor suction and therefore the carpet is not getting clean. That carpet is can get pretty nasty, but the odds of them mopping and disaffecting a hardwood floor or laminate floor or vinyl floor is way more probable and likely than with their cheap vacuum cleaner cleaning the carpets. Also, when looking at these pictures, if there's anything that you or anyone in your family or group require, search for it in the photos. For example, when we go on our family beach trip every year, especially when my nephews were younger, we made sure that the Airbnb always had a bathtub for their nightly baths since they weren't big enough to take showers. So making sure that there's pictures of the bathroom and that if you require a bathtub or a shower that you can clearly see in the photos if those amenities are there. This host has gone above and beyond with their photos and that's what I really like to see. They have indicated in one of their photos that there are parking spots, in this case, two parking spots, and have clearly highlighted. So if a host has included and gone above and beyond just the normal of what's in the rental, then that kind of gives you a good indication this host is gonna go above and beyond in other areas as well for the rental. This host has included a lot of great photos, and then towards the end, they've included some photos of the city itself. This 
isn't a red flag particularly, but I do want to point out that if a host has very limited pictures of the different rooms and the Airbnb itself, but includes a lot of photos of the city or highlights of things you can do in that destination, then that's kind of a red flag that they're packing their photos with other things that's not important. What's important is the Airbnb itself and what it looks like and is that going to fit your needs. So that's something to kind of be mindful is the ratio of photos of the city versus the actual rental itself. Okay, so after the kind of getting a good idea of the rental, then you can scroll down for more information. So this particular rental has three bedrooms, three beds, which is probably gonna be way too much for me. I don't need that much space. It's just gonna be me, but that gives you information there. There's also information on free cancellation before a certain date. This is something that I also look at when making my decision on which rental I wanna go with. If there is any concern or if you need some more flexibility, if you're not quite certain that this is the rental you wanna go with, but you don't wanna lose it just in case there are very few options, knowing the cancellation policy is a must. If I'm deciding between two rentals that are kind of equal value and have equal amenities, if one has a better cancellation policy with free cancellation pretty much up to the day before, then I will more than likely go with that one just to give me more flexibility with my own trip and not have all these restrictions. So that's another criteria that I look for. Airbnb also gives you kind of a little bit more information on the bedrooms and the types of bed that are in each bed room. The next section that I look at are the reviews. Now with any review site, you take the reviews with a grain of salt, but also you have to read in between the lines. So people are only reviewing if they have really positive experiences or really negative and one person's experience could just be unique to them and is not indicative of the host or the Airbnb property itself. Some things that I look for when reading reviews are would people stay there again? Would they highly recommend them? That type of language is a great indication that that is an honest review. If they are saying, yes, I would stay here again in my next visit, even if I have no plans to visit this city ever again, those phrases are great phrases to look for. Now, if a bad situation happens to a particular guest, I don't necessarily take that as an indication of the host or property itself, but what I look for is how did the host respond? Did the reviewer then say the host took care of it, no issues after that, or were there still issues their entire trip? Another item that I look for in guest reviews are distances from that rental to points of interest or activities of that city. So for security reasons, Airbnb does not give you the address or precise location of that Airbnb. So guests will often kind of give you some more guidance in their reviews. So if they say this rental was a five minute walk to this landmark or was a 10 minute drive to downtown. Those are very helpful and give you a good indication if this is a particular rental that would be beneficial for your trip. And the last thing that I look for in the reviews is actually I will scroll through to the previous year and look at the time frame of when I'm planning my trip. So for Chattanooga, I'm planning for May. So I will scroll to May of the previous year and actually May and June and maybe even July. I'll kind of look at those months. Airbnb prompts you to leave a review immediately after your stay. So typically you can kind of correlate the, the review and that time frame is about when they've stayed. So reading those reviews and kind of the issues or things that happened in those months that people are saying in their reviews, the AC went out or it rained a lot or different types of things like that can also give you a good indication of what this place will be like during your trip. So that's another thing that I do when looking at the reviews. But clear at the bottom are some other key points to look at, mainly the check-in and check-out times. So that's important depending on when you're arriving in the city that knowing your check-in time and if that would match. I'm planning on driving late afternoon anyway, so having a 4 p.m. checkout will not be an issue. Again, if I leave earlier, I'm bringing my own vehicle, so I don't need to find options to store my luggage. I have my vehicle. Check out at 11, that's, that's kind of typical. There's no other house rules that 
seem out of the ordinary. Health and safety, the cleaning, carbon monoxide, and smoke alarms, if that's important to you. <laughs> and again, the cancellation policy. Here in this location, you can show more and actually see a little bit more in depth of their cancellation policy. So the date you cancel by in which you would get a full refund versus if you cancel by this date, you might get 50% refund or the full refund minus the first night and service fee. So those are more in-depth cancellation policy information. Now that I've gone through all of that information and compared with other Airbnbs, I'm ready to book. So going here, it gives you the nightly rate, the cleaning fee, service fee, and this before taxes. So something to note is this rate may go up with taxes, but also some cities and countries have occupancy or tourist taxes. And they'll either include that, the host may include that in the before fee or after, or sometimes you pay that tourist tax in cash to the host when you get there. So that's something to be aware of. And then when you go to reserve, it will give you all of the tax and how much that is. I have already inputted my gift card to my account. So it is applying those credits to this total and what I pay. Now you have the option to pay the full amount, whether you're using gift cards or not, whatever that total amount remaining is. You can pay that in full now, or you can pay part of it now and the rest later. Something really important to note that if you are using gift cards to make sure that you have added all of your gift cards to your account before you book. If you are planning on paying part of it now and the rest later, when you have to pay that second payment, you are not able to use your gift cards. You have to use the credit card or debit card that you have on file. That is a big issue that I have with Airbnb because oftentimes I get Airbnb gift cards after I've already booked a place and have split my payments and I want to apply my newly received gift cards to my rental, but Airbnb will not allow you to do that. So you have, if you're splitting your payment, your second payment will be with your debit or credit card and you will not be able to apply any gift cards to the second payment. So make sure that you have all of your gift cards applied to your account so that that can be applied to your balance, whether that'll pay it in full or you need to pay the difference. Airbnb does have a messaging system. So once the host accepts your reservation, then you are able to message them back and forth in a chat function to get more information. You can do that ahead of time also if you have any questions, but after you book, is a great opportunity to continue the conversation with any questions you may have about the rental. Okay, so that is all the criteria that I kind of look for when booking an Airbnb. Let me know in the comments if there's certain criteria that you always look for when booking an Airbnb. I will be vlogging my Chattanooga trip, so look for that video here in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao for now.